Hello everyone, and welcome back to Model Building with Terry. It's been a long time, and it's not that I haven't done anything, it's just that I've never gotten around to actually edit the recording and, you know, record voiceover and anything. So, where did we leave off? Well, pretty much last time, last time I left off was, uh, we had the whole complete, sort of, we had the, uh, the screws and the hydroplanes on the rear and in the front, and the turret, or tower, or conning tower, whatever you want to call it, is going to be next, pretty much. And that's going to be, well, what we're looking at. So, uh, first, first of all, there was one part missing from the whole screw setup. And I'm not sure what that's actually for. I'm going to have to check the blueprints again. It looks like a sort of protective kind of um, rigging on top. Maybe this is there to protect the more sensitive bits of the propulsion system from being bumping into stuff. But anyway, uh, we're going to cut it out. It has a it has a fair amount of flashing on this part of the of the cast, so I'm going to have to do some <laughs> some smaller operations and get that all cleaned up. But uh, then we'll be adding that to uh, adding that on top, and then we can continue with something else. And there you see the the bits that are yeah that need to go. So I'm just going to use my very sharp and very small cutting impl implements here and uh, just get rid of the big ones and then just some fine sandpaper to make sure that everything is smooth and there's nothing sticking out afterwards. So yeah, this the. The model is the model kit is relatively small, and uh, while this is a very common format, the submarines themselves weren't all that large, so the, it it does tend to be on the fiddly side of things. So on top of the um, that part that kind of guards the whole thing, it also does another thing, and uh, it holds the vertical hydroplanes in place, which presumably are there to steer the submarine left and right, which. Occasionally is useful, especially if somebody is dropping depth charges on you. Uh, these are tiny and um, they do have to fit in between well the um, the foundation sits on the on the on the hull and then the part that holds it all in place is that triangular bit that I'm gonna put on top of it. So this is a tick fiddly, which means I'm gonna have to uh, see first that everything fits together and then try to gently glue them onto their, their sockets on the hull itself and then just get the other one on top. So let's put some glue on the base. And then I'll just stick those on and just hold them there for a sec such that they, they're stable and then put the, the holding part on top of them. I am using a pair of just regular tweezers, as you can buy it in any pharmacy or beauty shop or anything, and they are actually really good for managing very small bits. If you have to press down, I've got a pair of inverse tweezers as well that uh, release when you press them. But uh, th these ones are quite nice for kind of fine, this, this sort of fine work. Now it's just a matter of getting everything to be adjusted and in place. Next up, I'm going to start um, doing some work on uh, on the conning tower, actually, because we've got the we had the side parts pa uh, painted for quite a while, and while the while the, uh, the rest of the setup is drying, I can get the the deck, the top deck out, and then see if we can fit that nicely into the two halves of the conning tower. I'm doing a test fit first with these parts just to see if I need to if I need to get anything out but uh, there's a there's a nice groove which uh, has some indentations which match nicely and uh, lock this into place very neatly so uh, nothing required in terms of filing off or anything just a bit of cleaning up uh, on the part itself and then I can glue that together and there you have it that's gonna be our conning tower Next up, I'm dealing with the periscope and what I presume is maybe a radio antenna. Now these need, these need a, a custom paint job still. So there's going to be a 
sort of matte silvery color and the darker color that I've been using for the decks so far. So I give these a good stir and then give the two a bit a quick paint before we can fit them in. So while I was waiting for everything to dry, uh, you, you may or may not know that I am uh, generally, well, when I'm not busy recording, researching quite a fair bit about resources on, well, Second World War things, looking at pictures, looking at historical images, and just generally trying to expand my collection of information. And I did this as well with the U81 when I initially started, uh, started the project. But back in the day, uh, I really couldn't find a picture anywhere on the internet of the actual U81. It was in fact really pretty difficult to get a photograph of any of any uh, Type 7 C submarine except for the existing one over in Labour in Germany in the museum. I, I was kind of back off that and just relied on the on on the paint schemes that came with the Revel model. Now today or yesterday rather by by uh, just by lucky chance I came across a rather interesting website and that's the website of the Stiftung Traditionsarchiv Unterseebote which uh, is <laughs> a non non-profit organization apparently that deals with archiving submarine data from the first and second world war so that was very interesting and they have an online shop where they do sell digital or print versions of the exhibits that they have in the museums and one of those exhibits is a historical photograph of the u81 so I, it costs uh, the digital version costs three uh, three euros, so that's about five Australian dollars. So I spent that, <laughs> and uh, uh, still waiting for the actual link to be sent to me with the higher resolution picture. But uh, this is this is the uh, this is the only photograph of the U eighty one that I could find, and I did find it through that German website of the submarine museum and the attached uh, non profit the. Uh, that organization that deals with archiving this kind of information. They have a lot of more stuff, so it's it's really worth visiting if you're interested in these sort of things. They've got captain's logs and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but, um, and yeah, the, the money spent for this go completely goes to the efforts of preservation of this information. So it's uh, money extremely well spent. But uh, one thing really stands out to me here, and that is, uh, well, the camo scheme, because that looks nothing like what Revel has in their box on the U81 and what I have so far done kind of the first priming paint job for. So um, I was perplexed to say the least. I have not got I have not been able to find any information about if this uh, if, if maybe this uh, the submarine had multiple paint schemes maybe this was an earlier or later paint than what the than what the uh, Revel has put on their box. Uh, it it does look interesting though, and uh, even though it's not it's incomplete. So for example, the I can't see the sides of the conning tower, but I can see the front of the tower, and I can see the complete side of the submarine. So assuming that the other side looks identical, which it doesn't necessarily have to, but just assuming that it looks identical and is some form of dazzle camouflage, um, I would well. What do you guys think? Let me know. <laughs> do you think we should go with uh, the camo that comes with the Revel set? So the relatively simple, straightforward one. Or should we go with the paint job on this one? Because I think I can still modify it because I've just done the first layer and I should be able to just cover up the uh, brighter spots with, uh, with a darker base coat easily on a second go. So what do you think? Which one should we take? Should we take the one from the only picture I have been able to find within uh, my research of the U81 or shall we go with Revel's version of the camo? Let me know. Uh, I'll put a poll up just after the video goes and then you can uh, decide which one you like better. While the paint is drying, or while we're busy painting things rather, uh, I can start taking a look at the deck gun as well because the U81 had an 88mm deck gun plus a 20mm anti-aircraft gun that sat on the rear on top of the platform that is on the conning tower. And since I've, have, I've got the paints open, I'm just going to just see if I can fix some of the smaller, uh, maybe some smaller faults or smaller issues on the tower itself. Uh, that, uh, now that it's assembled, 
and just make sure that uh, that everything like the, the the parts where it was still attached to the casting frame uh, that they're all properly uh, covered with the right color the paint has sufficiently dried on the periscope and again what i still assume is the radio antenna so i'm going to start fitting these in and uh, stick them up into their respective positions on the tower and there we have it just maybe a touch more glue just to make sure that they uh, they sit firmly and then we can let this one rest and while these guys are drying i can get the anti-aircraft gun fixed as well like i said 20 millimeter aircraft were big problems for the uh, for the german submarines as they could both spot them and report their positions to destroyers, convoys and escorts, and they could also drop depth charges on them, which is really unpleasant. But I'm not sure how much effort, how much uh, success they really had with a single 20 millimeter gun, but you know, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So now it's time to, fi to fit the completed, or mostly completed conning tower onto, onto the hull. And I'm just making sure that it fits and that it has no rough edges because if it's not completely plain it's not going to um, it's not going to seal well with the, the base so there are a couple of smaller uh, smaller smaller spikes still on this from the casting so I'm giving it another go with the uh, 400 grit sandpaper and then afterwards with the 1200 just to make sure it completely it's completely flat and then we can go ahead and carefully apply some glue and don't want to put too much so it's not kind of swelling out to the to the side because getting rid of that stuff is really difficult but that's a, another reason why I'm leaving the final paint coat until it's pretty much assembled because I can in emergency still paint over things if they happen to go badly but in this case we're just going to fit the conning tower onto the, the rest of the hull and just make sure that it's in the correct position and there we go so we've got the We've got the hydroplanes, the screws completed, we've got the conning tower completed, we don't have the deck gun on yet, but uh, these are all these are all good. I just maybe need to do a final paint job for the for the gray parts. And there we have it. It starts looking like a submarine. There's still some bits missing, especially on top of the deck. But um, I'm really still happy with the amount of detail that, that's shining through the paint at this point. I might have to give the AA gun a little bit of uh, a little bit of depth. Uh, but that's all left for later for the weathering part. So for now, uh, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And uh, I'll see you next time when I get back to building the U81. Bye.